hello everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, it is said that there are two kinds of people. One is coffee people and one is tea people. I'm a 100% coffee person. I love drinking coffee. Before the pandemic, I used to go to coffee shops, bought some coffee from the ones everyone likes. Um, their tastes are not bad, okay, and I remember uh, I told to myself, um, everyone likes those coffees, and you should like them too. Everyone cannot be wrong, right? Then the pandemic happens and coffee shops closed, and I learned from YouTube how to roast green coffee beans with aluminium popcorn pan. I'm, doing, I'm still doing that. And how to green and uh, brew coffee. And I love the taste. This blank uh, faced uh, white coffee cup is crafted for my coffee. Uh, it holds everything that I liked. I put everything that I liked inside and I removed everything that I disliked. From time to time, I try new things and I learn. Today's Agile is like the output of those coffee shops. Their tastes are not bad. However, um, they are designed for minimum set of tastes, generally for being recognized by the majority. In this session, I will show you how to uh, roast, green, and brew your organizational culture. Um, and uh, I called it pure agile, that is agile without any brand or any framework or any obligation. My name is Lemmy, I'm a co-founder of Craftgate. Craftgate is a one-stop shop payment gateway. Um, the business is growing too fast. Um, and we are very excited. We got seed funded this year, and uh, and with the with the help of our founders, uh, we will jump to expand to other countries. Also, uh, it's been it, this year it will be my 21st year in my career. Uh, for two years, I I spent my time with as a consultant and, and as an agile coach, but. For a long time, for 19 years, I've been programming on backend side, mainly in Java and JVM technologies. And uh, let's start with a hist uh, history. Uh, I guess uh, five or six years ago, uh, I was going to a, a company, to a team as a consultant, as an agile coach, and they were doing two-week sprints and what uh, I need to do is organizing the events and facilitating those events. And in one of the planning meetings, we were doing poker planning. Some guy showed 13 and some, the other guy showed one and they have to discuss why th there's a, such a big difference, right? And during that time, the door is opened very harshly. The manager came and she said, with full of hate and anger. Uh, customers cannot pay their baskets. What the heck are you doing? She said, I don't care whether you do scrum or not. I care if the system is operating properly. Leave this damn room and fix it. Wow, as a consultant, as the agile coach, that was a tough moment for me. Everyone looked at me and I couldn't say anything. I said, She's right, guys, let's go out and fix this. And, but that moment changed my career, and that moment uh, made me think what Agile was and what Agile is really for. Um, I thought at that time, uh, being Agile is about following a well-known formula. We know the formula, Scrum. How many of you doing Scrum in their projects and in your organizations? Oh, more than half, a lot, a lot more than half. Uh, I've been doing Scrum uh, since 2007. It means hundreds of meetings facilitating and uh, participating too many meetings. The formula is clear. 
we have to split big tasks into small pieces, writing each task down on post-its. We are running sprints, of course, one or two or three weeks. We are doing planning meetings, daily scrums, review meetings uh, with small teams, of course. We have a Scrum Master. We put Scrum Master role in LinkedIn, and uh, we have to do Scrum by the book. If not, it's half Scrum, and we cannot achieve. We cannot succeed with half Scrum. So, but there's a question come to my mind at that time. I couldn't see what are the real problems of product, customer, and the team. What I mean is we know the answers. However, what are the questions? Do we really, of course, if there's an answer, we will know the questions, right? But those questions are all real questions. What are the real problems we are estimating, right? Why do we need that? We need pred pred uh, predictability, okay, but guesstimating really cannot help for predictability in order to be deterministic, be predictable, we need to improve our code base, we need to improve our infrastructure, we need to understand the domain well, not by just doing poker planning. And where is the customer in this cultural uh, organization, cultural style? Where, where is the customer? Customer success and product success. Then I thought eliminating waste and managing the flow evolve us gradually. Hmm, that sounds interesting and logical, definitely. There are steps, there are, of course, limit the work in progress, visualize the flow of work, and you have to manage the flow. You have to, you, you have, when you visualize the whole flow, you can understand where the problems are. You make the process policies, explain that everyone can understand, implement the feedback loops and evolve exponentially. Yeah. I liked the idea, evolution it could, be the, could, could be the answer. Um, continuously improve the system, remove the waste, detect the problems, and solve them. That's easy, right? One problem come to my mind. They are too simple to understand, but really difficult to master. That sounds interesting because we have we, we, we cannot get benefit from, from those principles in short term, even in mid term. We, we have to wait for long term. We have to, do we have to hire coaches? Do we have to give millions to, to, to consultants, uh, consultants? And do we really think shortening the daily scrum to 15 minutes from 30 minutes is more important than the problems of your product has? Mm. That is a weird question. Then I thought, of course I'm a programmer. Without technical excellence, we cannot be agile. It is impossible. We know that there are tons of practices and we love them. I've been doing most of them for years. I've been teaching them. I've been pay programming for years. Uh, and remote, interestingly, uh, I, I really get more comfortable while being removed in, while during the pairing. Anyway, um, with these uh, this technical practices, do we really, can we really agile? There's a problem here. I cannot achieve with my individual effort. It's a team effort and convincing the whole team sometimes seem impossible. Those practices, needs a lot of work, a lot of knowledge, and a different mindset, and we need to practice a lot. So, then I thought, anyway, Agile is doing the things right. Agile is the correct way. If, if, when you see something correct, it is Agile. And we can replace the world Agile with the best, maybe, or the winning, yeah, could be, or how it should be, definitely. Interestingly, the world likes this idea. They put agile in front of everything when they think the product development 
is the best product development they do, then they put Agile on it, and they put Agile testing, Agile development, Agile sales, Agile delivery. There are Agile companies, every company is in Agile companies these days, Agile leadership, and Agile world becomes a brand explaining nothing. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like the best, what it means, the best. Anyway, uh, when you go to trainings, in Agile trainings, and when you read books about Agile, usually uh, Scrum, Common, or XP, the implementation details are explained. And on the left-hand side are copy and pasted from an Agile online training from Udemy. Yeah, it's full of ingredients of Scrum. Where is Agile? What does it mean? Really, really, what does it mean? Um, in fact, uh, I see Agile organizations doing nothing about Agile. I see successful organizations with big teams doing no estimations, having a big product team with no sprints, with no boards, sticky boards, and they don't care what Agile is. Wait a minute, I've been doing Scrum since 2007. That is weird. Anyway, what they care is not Agile. What they care is product, team, and the customers. They care about the business. What they care is the product management. What they care is sales and talent management and organization and leadership. What they care is this. Dave Thomas, one of the signers of Agile Manifest and co-founder, uh, sorry, co-author of the Pragmatic Programmer book. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a very good book, by the way. Uh, wrote something very Interesting. Let's abandon the world agile to the people who don't do things. Instead, let's use a world that describes what we do. He doesn't really say people using the world agile are not doing anything. What he says, let's use something different, a different world, word describing what we really do. The word agile is dead already. Let's remove it from the dictionary. I guess I feel I need to make a statement here. I trained, even though I am not a certified trainer, I trained people about Scrum Common XP for years, and I'm, but I'm not a follower of them. I'm not against them. I like them. I use them. But I won't say, and I won't say Scrum Common and XP doesn't work. But I say is following them doesn't mean it makes you agile because why it's really easy to say wise words. However, uh, execution is a different, is a totally, but totally different world. Okay, everything starts with Alan Turing at mid 40s, right? Gradually, people join to the software development sector one by one and projects started to be bigger and bigger and started to fail eventually. It's, it's the nature of the software to fail as a reaction to traditional way of developing software and failures. People start to propose an alternative ways, right? Like iterative and incremental development, 1957, and prototyping, Sprill model, even Evolutionary delivery, Evo, and rapid application development, those are heavyweight processes that are proposed as a reaction of failure. And afterwards, in the 90s, lightweight frameworks occur and Crystal, Scrum, DSDM, extreme programming, and adaptive programming, those are lightweight. But the main, the main point is agile, Values and concepts are not invented by Agile Manifesto. They are, they've been there for years, for more than 10 years, with different names. And authors of the Agile Manifesto gathered together not for inventing Agile, because they are there for, they, they gathered uh, because they, 
they experienced how to build successful projects and products. They know, they felt it, they experienced it, and they extracted the winning mindset. And, and um, one thing is clear. Scrum without XP works fine. Scrum without, with XP is also works fine. Safe is not evil and fits perfectly. Half Scrum, half Kanban are all fine. Doing Scrum by the book, fine. Kanban, Scrum ban, Scrum ban, XP ban, safe ban, all fine. All work perfectly under specific conditions. It may work for you, it may work for others, it may not work for you, for your dynamics, for your, for your organization, for your team. If it works for you, it doesn't mean it works for everyone and, and valid for the opposite. Now, a new decade has already been started, 1990s, pure agile movement has started. It's, as Dave Thomas said, it's time to go back to the basics where agile has values, virtue, has a meaning. Being pure agile means being agile without talking about agile, without the word agile. And it has very simple steps, simple explanation. No pre-described rules, no formula for success. Just you need to keep your focus on customer, team, and product. Regularly evaluate your needs and problems. Shape what you do based on your needs. If, do if it resolves a real problem, stop generating fake problems and get benefit from all existing frameworks. Now it's time to create your own model. Pure Agile means creating your own model. Your own model means it's like a culture model is like a painting. So in order to create a painting, you need a brush, a palette, and many colors, of course, and the painter, right? Um, Cultural model is the painting itself, but it is not completed. It changes in time by each brush, strokes, palette, colors, and the brush are the principles, by the way. They are guidelines. You have to use them to paint. You can't ignore them. Uh, the painter is the one who does the paint with her behaviors. Behaviors are the things she does and she ignores, by the way, identifies the real output. <coughs> okay, let's start with the core principles to design your own unique, tailored cultural model. First, the very first rule of being agile is don't talk about it. The term agile is too abstract. It's like the winning or the best and it's a reaction against traditional methods, I said, and just focus on the product, customer, and team. And you have to learn how others succeed. Uh, stop referencing, uh, start creating fake problems, and you need to talk about the product, the real problems of the product, and start referencing your values, your principles, your goals, scrum values, cannot be your organizational goals, your values. You have to have your own. The second principle, without knowing your team well, it is impossible to create a cultural model for your organization. You have to know your team well and trust. Of course, tr trusting your teammates is not really easy, however, Trust and knowing your team well uh, improves uh, everything, and um, it's the first uh, one of the first steps for doing the model, for creating the model. So, earn trust before waiting to be er to be earned. Um, by supporting your teammates, you have to work and chat with everyone on daily basis. You have to be in the team. Your you have to know the strengths and weaknesses of each individual. 
this is serious. This is a serious work. You have to, if you want to create your own model, you have to know the weaknesses of your, of your team and your, and your product. And you have to ask feedback from, from your team about strengths and weaknesses. You, keep, you may not see any of them. And, and that, is, that is really important and it's serious. The third one is you have to get management support and direct facilitation for creating an organizational model. Because without, if management does not want to change, does not want to change anything, bottom-up initiative has little, very, very little chance to win. I worked like these companies in the past for years. We tried and tried for years as a bottom-up initiative and nothing but nothing happens. Management, if management really does not want to change anything, nothing is changed. First of all, uh, managers should leave their ivory tower. They have to leave their rooms and they have to work with the, their team. They should go to the kitchen and understand the pain, <coughs> uh, feel the pain. And managers should be the role model or should try to be the role model. They are the managers of the team. They are the leaders and they should be a team member, by the way. The fourth principle, uh, you should have an inspiring purpose because loyalty, motivation, accountability, a corporation ownership all starts with an inspiring purpose. And thus this purpose cannot be completing all the tasks in a sprint. And or catching the deadline is not a purpose, by the way or being the best application ever in our sector it, it cannot be the purpose. Like uh, I created a purpose very similar to our company, um, that purpose, when people read that purpose in your organization, they should feel proud. They should want to be a part of it because that purpose should show the strengths of your team because like here, the features, the quality and the speed of support, integration, easiness, and the success rate, maximizing success rates for a payment company is very, very important. And in order to do that, you should la laser focus your, your whole, whole everything uh, on this purpose. And um, stop aiming to finish all the tasks and purpose should contain business vision and the team's strengths. And the fifth one, define your core values and principles. You have to define a baseline on your culture and a baseline for your team. Most of the time you see on the blog post on Twitter uh, about company culture, companies express and share their wisdom with everyone. And, but nobody cares because when you look inside, when you, feel, you see the real company culture because every, behavior, every toxic behavior you ignore shapes the culture. Everything you do and everything you ignore, you don't do. Every crisis you handle shapes the culture. The culture you cannot really shape, you, you, you cannot identify or build a culture. Step by step you can shape it or change the shape slowly. Then you have to hire uh, Increasing people, increasing the social cohesion of the team. Hmm, social cohesion. I love this world. I love the. I, I guess I. I learned that that word uh, that uh, thing from from the book, uh, the face Facebook. Uh, go fast and break things. Uh, social cohesion uh, doesn't mean having the same kind of people in the team. Social cohesion is, is sharing a mission, a common values, and, and basic willingness to work together. 
in order to have a common agreement about the core values and principles, by the way, uh, it is really important to hire people increasing the social cohesion. And of course, never lose focus for increasing the diversity and be, be transparent with your team and create and um, draw a baseline for your culture. And the last one is stop doing if it's not really needed. Take action if you really convince your team and yourself it is really needed and you have to evaluate it regularly. You're running scrum, uh, sprints, right? You are uh, doing 15 minute stand-up meetings and uh, planning meetings and estimates. Do you really need them? You have to ask yourself um, estimation is, is, is really needed, uh, according to me, uh, till four or uh, three years ago. And after, before, uh, last three years ago, we stopped estimating tasks and the whole fog is disappeared. It, it, my world changed. Um, my world changed, but it doesn't mean it will change for you too. So uh, you need to evaluate the real need before practicing a methodology. Um, rituals and methodologies are tools, by the way. Um, you have to do it uh, if you really feel you need. Okay, those six practices, six, sorry, six core principles will guide you while cult cultivating your culture. But uh, we have to look at the core practices. Those practices, we may talk about hundreds of them, including the practices, physical practices and thought practices. They're all important, uh, including the ones in Scrum, Common XP, we can, we can talk. All pool practices uh, have a same goal, according to me. It's continuously responding to change fast to satisfy customers with the whole team. Hmm. It's interesting, isn't it? The meaning of agility. That goal, we can combine, we can group all the practices into this goal. And I split the goal into five sections. First one is responding to fast. The second one is continuously the third one is to change. The fourth one is to satisfy customers. And the fifth one is with the whole team. There is a whole range of practices. You can select any of them according to your needs. So what are they? Of course, it's impossible to cover all of them, but I prepared sample ones uh, that can show my ideas. So uh, for responding fast, in order to respond fast, we have to deliver fast, right? We have to deliver fast, we have to learn fast, and we have to provide support fast. In order to deliver fast, decisions sh should be taken fast at organization level, at team level, and on the task level. And on, in order to deliver fast, we have to develop fast and make it live fast. In order to learn fast, we have to learn from our teammates, we have to learn many things from our customers and from our products. And for providing support fast, we have to communicate fast, understand fast, and resolve fast. But what does that they mean? Let's, let's look at learn fast from team members. So I split it into four parts. So we need to discuss together retrospectives, brainstorming sessions, review meetings, open space meetings. Lots of meetings we can discuss together and we should share together internal seminars, code katas, workshops, lightning talks. By the way, we are doing lightning talks in our company a few times a year. And we have to work closely, like in, like in a war room, or sit together, close together, or uh, if you're working remotely, pay programming, mob programming, um, or collaboration with the product team via doing B2B 
BDD or during kickoffs. And you have to sp spend time together, office chit chats or one to one meetings or off site gatherings. We have to learn fast. And we have to deliver fast and we have to develop fast. Hmm. I have a talk, by the way, another talk. It's called Slow Down to Go Fast. Uh, but of course, we have to slow down to go fast, but we have to go fast because um, building a product is like racing in Formula One. You have lots of opponents, and um, it, even if you have a fast car or a, fa or a laser focused driver, it doesn't mean you will succeed, you will be the first. You have to go really fast and you, you have to collaborate, you have to coordinate well, you have to be productive. Anyway, in order to develop fast, know, you have to know where to change. You have to be the domain expert, by the way. Without knowing your domain well, you cannot propose a good solution, I believe. And we have a good test suite. We have to know, we have to spread our knowledge, share our knowledge via pay programming or mob programming. We have to develop fast. Uh, we have to know our uh, tools, uh, by the way. If you are using IntelliJ idea, uh, you have to know almost every function because you have to use it. You have to know the shortcuts. Uh, you have to know, uh, you need to know uh, how to refactor uh, efficiently. And you have always, we, we need to be ready to deploy. We, ha we should have automated tests, feature toggles to deploy half products. Of course, microservices, micro front end, Git branching models, Git flow, trunk based development, inf infra code. Those are a wide range of practices we can put there. And we should keep easy to be changed. One is the like four rules of simple design, refactoring, solid principles, boys code rule, bug fixing procedures, refactoring techniques. We can put many, many points here. And uh, for in, in the continuous part, we need sustainability. Sustainability in the focus. We need sustainable pace. We need sustainable improvement sustainable and a healthy communication, sustainable quality, people quality, team quality, decision and product quality, of course. We need sustainable throughputs and sustainable productivity. Let's, let's look at one example. In sustainable quality, we need to improve people and team quality. We need to hire A players. When you hire A players, you will get other A players to your team, but if you get B players, you will get C players in the future because B players really want to be the top on your team. So you have to make improve your hiring process and make it make your interviews a win-win, you know, um, and stop making mediocre programmers uh, employable or. Or, or great, uh, give them support, help them, but you have to keep your focus on the A players too. You have to do close mentorship, uh, pairing sessions, coding se uh, coaching sessions as well, and you have to grow leaders. In Craftgate, in my company, we remove the seniority levels. We don't have junior, mediocre, senior, principal expert titles or seniority levels. Everyone is a crafter or software developer because everyone is a leader. Everyone should take the initiative, should feel how to be the leader. We don't change, uh, we don't put layers on people. And also we need to have a healthy communication. We have to align on a shared goal. Daily scrum, daily alignment, planning meetings, one-to-one -one meetings, company gatherings fit there. And you have to adopt the Conway's law, you know? On the con you have small teams fit well, but sometimes you don't need that. Modular architecture, microservices, those, those practices can fit there. And you have to agree on, shake hands on, on the standards with your team. 
like you, you can create guidelines, we are wiki on your company and put negative and positive feedbacks from your team regularly and doing retrospectives. And the third area is the to change area. We have to keep track of the process. We need to know where we are and uh, we keep the follow flow deterministic. And also, we need to be ready for a change. Uh, we need to initiate and iterate the change and prioritize the change. Those are really needed for, for governing the change, managing the change. For example, for being ready for the change, change, what I mean is change in the product. So be ready for an extension. You need to grow your product by extending it. So there are lots of Lots of practices there, modular architecture, separation of concerns. This is fundamentals, coupling and cohesion, but very few people talk about in, in the organizations. Hexagonal architecture, I'm a big fan of it, and that changed my, my life, my, my uh, career. Um, solid principles, you believe or not, there are lots of alternative dependency management principles, we can say, conscious refactoring, TDD. Uh, we can put there, and we should ready for release, feature toggles, trunk-based development, continuous delivery pipelines, continuous integration, and such. And we have to be ready for an experiment. We have to do experiments for our product, because most of the time we really, we really don't know what is really impact, what is the real impact on the change. So we need automatic provisioning, multi-environments, multi Git branching models, there are lots of branching models, feature toggles as well. And another one, to satisfy the customers, you have to identify the expectations of the customers for projects and for products, of course. They are different. They are really different. And we need to meet the expectations and we need to surpass the expectations and light the customers. So how can that happen? So let's look at the surpass expectations, what we need to do. We need to delight with the product, delight with the delivery, delight with the communication, and delight with the collaboration. So with the delight with the product means high, we need to deliver high quality product fast. Uh, we need to keep the feature list as short and, um, short and high quality as possible. Also, we need to release frequently. We need to resolve bugs fast. In order to resolve the bugs fast, we need to keep our infrastructure architecture simple, as simple as possible. Technical depth is natural. However, we need to know how to live with it. We need to hear responses of expectations from customers. However, without touching them, without working together, it is impossible to, to delight with, with your collaboration. In Craftgate, most of the time, we do Zoom meetings with, with businesses, uh, uh, software developers, and they show us how the, the, the code base that they integrate our, our system and we give feedback. And for the last one, with the whole team, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a team sport. So we, we need to improve accountability and ownership. We need to improve competence, improve teamwork, cultivate professionalism, and we do not manage people. We need to manage the flow. Let's look at an example here. Let's cultivate the professionalism. So if you really want to cultivate professionalism in your organization and in your team, someone needs to be the role model, probably on the leaders. So someone, someone should behave ethical, uh, someone should be, everyone should be kind and should be passionate and disciplined. Of course, they should show respect. Those are taught principles, practices, sorry. And, uh, and we need to feel apprentice. Anyone can uh, know better than you. That's why we need to always go back to fundamentals and look them again and again. And we need, we should not ignore toxic behaviors and we should own our career. We have to invest or yourself. When look at scrum principles, scrum common XP practices, sorry, practices, lots of practices exist and we can put all of them into these five groups. 
And finally, uh, your team is special. Your organization is special. You, have, you should stop chasing formulas, chasing for success formulas, and know your team well, feel the purpose, identify the real needs, and select the practices touching and tailored for your needs, and you, you, you can create your own model and start today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.